Howdy everybody, I am Kolik, and this is Summoner's War. Now, with a uh, martial artist uh, dungeon coming up, and uh, available in most areas by now, I believe, it's time to think about whether you want to farm the martial artist or not. <clears throat> now, Comptuous recently made a buff to the martial artist, which I'm sure everyone knows, because we have not been living under rocks. We do play, you know, mobile games and stuff, right? So, there's four different martial artists, well, okay, they buffed all five, but I find that the water one, which was the one they made available, of course, to be the weakest of all of them. He offers nothing really special. He's He wants to put up a counterattack ability, but his damage isn't based on his survivability, essentially. Um, he just doesn't do anything, doesn't really fill any niche role that anybody needs anywhere. Okay, so, having said that, let's talk about the other four. The Fire Martial Artist is pretty much the only unit in the game that is immune to armor break and is fire. Which means that um, this is an, a really important point. Is Basically, he has the same modifier as taking half damage. So he's effectively an Armada or other things that is... Um, can't be armor broken. His damage is, at least on the second ability, is based on defense, which means he can do a bit of damage that is useful to your group, but he also provides armor break and stun. This is a really neat little package. Pretty much everyone's going to want him at some point just to tank a fire monster. I mean, not a fire, fire monster, but a water monster. Unfortunately, there's just not a lot of great water monsters out there but you also have to consider that he will can tank fire monsters assuming that they have no orion in the group something that can armor break a uh a, um, well actually anybody he can go water water fire he won't get the, they won't do extra damage to him because he won't be a um wind type monster so fire he can really well he just really can tank fire monsters as well so he's actually a pretty decent monster because he's actually taking half damage really in several situations one where he can tank all the water monsters and two where he can tank all the fire monsters which you would set up by going like water water fire or you know that kind of thing so that's kind of a cool option and and that makes sense that i think you definitely want to have this guy in your arsenal even if you don't need to six star him right away because you don't feel like you need him you should have this guy in your arsenal because he is, he provides a very unique set of skills all right now let's talk about the second one and the second one gets more complicated the wind martial artist now the wind martial artist has been buffed so his third ability now scales off of speed now the multipliers have been researched and so we can compare him to various other monsters that are available. Um, okay, the, the two that are most comparable, well, I'm not going to talk about Chimeras because we don't want to talk about five stars in comparison if we don't have to. Okay, so the two most comparable are Susanna or Orochi. Both the ninjas have been buffed recently too. Their second skill, uh, both scale on speed and then they... Uh, multiply into uh, attack power um, now the difference is and this is a major difference is that Susanna and Orochi both have much higher base attacks in fact Susanna in particular has much higher base attack than the wind martial artist she has 911 base attack versus the wind martial artist only has 659 now the multiplier could be enough to make that up. Unfortunately, it is just not. It is speed plus one four hundred, and it's divided by point eight, which is the same thing as multiplying by uh, one point two five. So it's just not enough. If it's got a two fifty base speed, you can see what the multiplier is going to be by doing math. And even if you crank it up to four hundred. It's just not going to be enough, especially considering that the multiplier on Susanna is speed plus 150, which is lower, but then it's basically multiplied by 2. That gives you a lot bigger edge as you get higher and higher speed versus the other one, which doesn't quite scale as literally for speed. Um, for low speed monsters, people starting out, I mean, it's a decent monster. It could scale on speed. 
but if you have access to any depth of monsters at all essentially it's not that great okay as far as its pure nuking capability now it does have stuns built in and stuns are always good we like stuns I just I don't see it enough that you're going to want to set up this guy to be able to to do as a stunner um, he doesn't have enough hit points to uh, stick around if they violent proc out of the stun and I just don't think he's quite cuts the mustard for being able to want to say I need to build him okay um, the fire one's a definite must-have this one is not quite there now it's not saying that come to us may not buff him again after all they buffed uh, drunken masters recently and they just buffed them a few few weeks ago so if you feel like you have the extra energy and you want to farm up the extra 17 skill ups needed for him which is a whopping 850 pieces uh, you can feel free to however wait is, that, is it 850 pieces this time four no it's uh 680 pieces so if you feel like you need you, you want to farm him up well, I, it, he has he's got some options I don't think he's quite there yet but it certainly does not mean that con to us won't buff him okay um as I said they're just showing a willingness to do this so bear that in mind now all right let's talk about the two more controversial ones the two ones that I think are kind of on the fence uh, we're gonna go first for the dark martial artist now the dark martial artist has got a tremendously high multiplier if and this is a big if you stun the monster now the first set of monsters bosses this is not even possible which basically halves his multiplier now this still makes the multiplier decent uh, 740 I believe but at 740 he is less than the dark harpy the dark harpy also armor breaks and brands okay and so to me the dark harpy would be better as a DPS monster than dark martial artist for against bosses and stuff for PvP he certainly has a mice potential on burst to output the problem is is that his attack is abysmal in the 500 range which means that even though he has this great multiplier and he might stun and double his damage it still is not going to be like jaw dropping amount of damage now I haven't seen a whole bunch of stuff coming out on him yet I mean, obviously, they could decide to buff him again, just like they could on the wind one. Um, the problem is really fundamentally with a dark unit is that they are easily armor broken. If they're armor broken, anyone will target him, which means he needs protection. Now, he does bring his own uh, defense break, okay? But that's just what's going on. All right, that's my friend. He's he, we're gonna play a, an action RPG game called Path to Exile race lately, lately, tonight. Anyway, um, so, so the question really is okay: is is he worth it? And to be honest, to be because he's dark, in my opinion, they have to have a little extra oomph, a little extra reason for being, um, ignore defense is a great thing okay you makes you want to take the risk of that he might get armor broken in one shot by anything okay um he's got low base hit points but decent defense but again if he's armor broken there goes that okay he's very loose and vulnerable okay he doesn't have the stuff built in where you would like it essentially all right so now let's talk about the last one and the last one is the most interesting one in my opinion which is hero now hero is a the light one and the light guy has suffers the same problems as the dark guy in that he needs to be uh, if he's armor broken he can be targeted by the bosses however let's quick look at hero allows us to see what kind of abilities he really has so let's see 
I know you'll say, he's right there, why can't you see him? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, there he is. Hero. All right, so. He's still got the stun, which goes up to 60%, which is what we want. Uh, he has a chance to armor break and gain an extra turn, which is interesting because, um, you know, this is the first set of units that really has this. Um, essentially, you can compare him to saying give him an attack buff himself, except that defense break actually increases the damage output more than an attack buff does uh, as far as damage output does okay now the third thing is is this and unfortunately there's hard to compare this skill against anything except for con okay uh, we're going to try to compare it to other skills but because it also provides a taunt uh, it's even better than con's taunt because it's two turns okay uh, it's hard to compare it though to other three star monsters which don't have a taunt or even four star monsters so let's talk about the multipliers what kind of damage output can we see from a hero now a hero has 10 7 10 so 10,710 base HP and his attack will do 240% um, attack plus 30% HP now this is an important point because the attack means scales that it'll, it'll matter. You can't just, you don't want to just ignore attack. Uh, Rakan is 440 in comparison plus 40%. So Rakan is 200% more attack and 10% more HP. So obviously we can see that Rakan is going to hit harder. In addition, Rakan has an attack buff on himself and he was got a thousand more HP. Now we don't want to compare it again to Nat 5s. This is a Nat 3. All right. But Rakan does not armor break. Now my Rakan in uh, arenas uh, and guild wars hits for upwards of 38 40k on an armor broken target so i run him with orion a lot because you know get the nice armor break going this guy is self armor breaking which means that he doesn't have to worry about that in addition if you're going to say put him on violent and say i'm going to go ahead and use the uh second skill first i'm just going to count that it counts uh, that it that that attack does damage to that attack does 190 times three okay which means that essentially he does an extra 570 percent um attack well if you add that in that means he does 570 plus 240 okay so on attacks that he's successful which is going to occur about 52 to 53 percent of the time um he's going to do a 610% attack and 30% HP. Now that's really significant and why you're going to have to gem him with attack and not just straight HP. Now in comparison there is another monster on this list um, that people build sometimes and it's called Vigor. And Vigor does 140% attack plus 10% HP but then does 3 hits. It also self armor breaks. It has slightly more base HP which gives a little bit of an edge there. And the three three times, so basically that would be 420% attack and 30% HP. Now 420 and 30 is still less than Rakan, obviously. Um, does self armor break, which is nice. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit more than just the pure nuke of Hero. However, it's going to be less than the two turn combo, which also armor breaks. In addition, Vigor is water. And the water means that he's going to be good against the fire units, and he's not so good against wind, and he's, you know, just marginal, the same against uh, water. Well, uh, hero is going to be the same against all of them. All right, so now, in my opinion, hero is stronger than vigor because of two reasons. First off, his first ability, a stun, is really cool. It's a high percentage chance. My Perna, I believe it's a 50% stun on it. And you see, notice the Perna stuns from Perna all the time. This guy's got even a higher stun chance. He's got the same stun chance as Veramos. And you know how much Veramos stuns things. So, he's definitely, his stun is going to be noticeable. Okay? So, the stun is definitely a plus over a Vigor. Alright? Next up. He armor breaks. Yep. And he's probably going to want to be on violent. Yep. So that's pretty cool. Um, 
but he's also light. And light means that he's going to be not any disadvantage or advantage over anybody. Now, there's a cover in the dark guy. You know, light is also a disadvantage in that he gets armor broken and he gets targeted by everybody. But you're scaling, you're building a guy who scales off max HP, which means he's got a significant amount of HP. Okay, he has over 2,000 more base HP than the dark one to start with. So you're probably going to be talking about mm, 33, 32, 35, maybe even more, depending on how much attack, uh, HP you want, because you do want some attack. Okay, but he's going to be a really high HP monster. Now, next point. Over Vigor or Escher, um, I th there's another advantage that Hero has, and the, that is, is that Hero has an advantage of that he is, does one attack. Okay, now the second attack does three times, I think. Okay, but the big nuke is a single nuke, which means that if you're not running a hundred percent crit rate, I mean, it'll hit or miss. You'll be doing full damage, or you won't be full damage. And the fact that he's got a stun makes you look to catch up a little bit uh, on the fact that if you miss, you're not you're not dead. Okay, unlike some nukers. Um, see on Escher. Let's say you ran with 70% crit rate. You have to crit four times with Escher, okay, to basically maximize your damage, which means that crit rate is really important, and you can't get away with, like, skimping a little bit. Um, one crit, or non-crit in this case, can mean the difference between you killing a monster and not killing a monster. And if you don't kill a monster, the master crit doesn't come back up, and you're screwed. All right, so there's an advantage there, but I think the biggest advantage is, is that even if you don't crit him, which we all know is a big if, right, in some of these worlds, especially against the high end guys, you know, I've seen monsters where I've crit him for 54k and then not die. All right, with uh, I'm looking at you, with them. Um, hero will taunt them, okay. Not so useful against Wadam, but very useful against things like Tassoon and uh, any healer really at all. Um, even a straight DPS, you can nerf their DPS significantla by just making them ta taunting them for two turns. And it's two turns, which means even if they violent proc once, you're still good. Okay? He's got the hit points to absorb it. Assuming he's not armor broken, he could take two direct hits from TMRs if he's not armor broken and survive them, which is pretty nice for the for the taunt. Um, unless you play around with a little bit, even if you say your defense break fails because they have will runes and you fail to remove it, you know. Um, well, okay, in that case you couldn't do the, the if if they have will runes you couldn't do anything, but if they defense broke and well you you try to defense break and you failed and they're like okay well you know. You're still not dead. You can taunt the Theo for two turns. And this thing is very fast cooldown. It's got a, um, I believe, a three turn cooldown on it. Um, but it, it might be four, but I think it's three. Which means by you, he only has one turn where you can actually use a different ability. That's pretty serious. Shutting down a beast monk like that is pretty good. Um, so all in all, Hero looks pretty reasonable. Now, let me compare Hero to other monsters, just to give you an idea of how much damage he can do. Um, Kumar, Ritash, Chandra all have modifiers about 29% HP for their AoEs. So, he's going to be stronger than one single nuke, even though they have higher base HPs. Um, his percent attack should be able to make that up. So, they're going to hit. he's going to hit harder than they are. Um... Uh, he's going to do uh, it's going to be hard to tell what he does about Escher um, and uh, Jewelton he's probably going to do more damage than Jewelton does and Jewelton does a noticeable amount of damage um, too because that base attack means that he can scale it pretty well it's going to be you need some pretty decent runes now let me tell you, say this, this side. you need some decent runes for this guy it's not going to be just pure HP like you can do on Escher or Jewelton. You, you need good attack subs, and which means you need runes that have rolled, that are like HP percent runes, but have rolled attack and crit rate 
and hopefully crit damage and speed all right so we're talking quintuple rolls right the base and four good rolls and other things and basically you got some attack okay and so on the second the the first skill first uh, rune you're going to want attack and hp and crit rate and crit damage and and hopefully having an eight being speed i mean you're seeing how particular some of these runes can be. But having said that, you're talking about violent. There is nobody else who's really directly competing for this. The attack subs do not matter for things like Kumar, Retash, any support type monsters really don't depend on attack. Um, I have an Anvil. Which is the only other monster I can think of that actually depends, requires HP and attack, and would prefer to be on violent. And that is attack, uh, attack runes with HP subs, is what you prefer on that. Um, with that, I have kicked mine to like 25k HP, even without towers. And uh, so you can get some pretty significant ones there. And and they're not, they don't really compete with the other ones because who wants a lot of HP and they don't have require crit rate or crit damage so is hero an interesting unit yes he requires 17 skill ups now the, the fire up which I forgot to mention he only requires 12 he's the easiest to skill up for a uh, martial artist it's a slam dunk in my opinion that you want to get one all right the light one he's interesting okay he will certainly be able to fulfill certain roles. But in particular, he's a HP scaling monster that brings his own defense break. Last I checked, there's only two, Retash and Vigor. And both of them get used. Retash, obviously, people like that better. It's got a heal, it's got, you know, speed up. It's, it's a nat five, right? <laughs> right? We all want every nat five. Um, figure certainly used, probably underused, mainly because he also scales on attack and HP. Escher is easier to skill up, um, but he doesn't provide his own attack break. I mean, a uh, defense break. So, I would say that the light martial artist is interesting enough is you should go ahead and get skill ups for him if you have the time. Fire, in my opinion, is a must. Light is something that's good and you probably sh want to get the skill ups for. Maybe wait until see someone like myself or one of the other channels decides to go ahead and build him. But the dark, I think, is uh, probably not. And then finally, I think the wind is just a no-go unless you just really like farming the secret dungeons. All right. Well, I hope this helps you out on deciding whether you want to uh, hero or not. And good luck on FFR. Or FRR. Anyway, this is uh, Kolik signing out.